Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing from my kitchen again. Regrettably still not well enough to get down the river or anywhere else fishing for that matter. So um, in the hope that I'm going to get down the river after my uh, preferred species which is perch at this time of the year I'm going to be running through how I make rigs up for them and these are the items I need so first of all I've changed the float I'm using I used to use what was called Drennan T-Pose which were um, a interchangeable tipped body down pole float the ones I've changed to now are the new Drennan AS8s. That's these, same idea, but they have a lot stronger spring eye. Here. And they also have a much better paint finish. And they're a little less clumsy. Other than that, they're basically the same design, interchangeable tips. Uh, line I'm going to be mounting them on, Drennan Extra Tough in 018 six pound breaking strain. Now because it's winter time, uh, I've stepped down, would you believe, 018 is the lighter line that I use, but I'm going to be fishing a very snaggy venue and the extra tough although it's listed as a hook length is quite abrasion resistant and i need it to combat the weed growth in there um, next things i have two sizes of float i'm going to shot up today one is a one gram which is this one here and the other one is a 0.6 now the one gram version will be fished with an inline olivet. 0.7 of a gram, which will leave 0.3 of a gram for dropper shots. The smaller float, the 0.6, will be shotted purely with uh, number eights. So it can be fished on the drop through the water. And that is basically how I rig up for these perch. I'll set up two rigs, one to fish a bait hard on the bottom to get down quickly. And, but I also set up a lighter rig um, with strung out shots. So, because sometimes the perch will rise off the bottom to intercept feed, especially if you're using loose fed casters. Other items, uh, a pack of uh, sensor silicone float rubbers, some rubber float stops to fix the olivet in place and some number eight and ten stots as droppers a qd quick snap swivel and a pair of uh, preston innovation double winders i like these because you can fit two bulky floats on these easily so um, i can double up so i shall I shall only demonstrate making up one, but I shall make up two of each size. So, uh, duplicates in case anything goes wrong. Tools, small pair of scissors, sensors loop tire. So, let's get going. So, let's get started. First of all, taking your silicone tube, cut off two lengths. You can cut three, but I'm using two. One at about five millimetres one at about 10. Get your line. So pull off a bit of line, trim off any curly ends. Right, take your float, thread the line through the top eye going towards the base slide the smaller piece of silicone rubber on wet the flap 
flow, stem, just stops the uh, line and the silicone being damaged. Slide the silicone up till it's about an inch I like below the body and take your other piece of silicone Slide that over the base of the float. Now, the top piece I like to cut about five millimeters long and the bottom piece at the bottom of the stem about 10 millimeters long. Uh, that's so it overlaps. You can use three, um, but that's entirely up to you. So just pull a bit of line through. Then take a float stop. Slide that up the line, wet the line again, helps the float stop the slide. Slide that up the line. Add your Olivet. Fat end facing towards the hook. And then add another float stop. So there we have the float Olivet and a float stop on either side. Next step, take a quick snap swivel. Now I, you can use loop to loop and I used to but I've virtually changed over exclusively. Make changing hook length so much easier. So tie it on with a good secure five turn union knot. Wet the knot before you pull it tight. Now I know that this Olivet won't be enough to cock the float. So I reckon I'm going to need about four number eights. I'm not using uh, small droppers because I'm using a big bait like a lobworm. There is no point in small droppers. I want to be able to see the float move with the weight of the droppers as well. So I just put them on the line using a pair of style pincers or a small pair of pliers. Some people will use their teeth, but I don't. And there we have, I think, let me just double check that. Now I've shotted this down so that there's about an inch of bristle showing. The reason for that is I'm fishing for big fish with big baits. I want to give them time to uh, take the bait down. I also will be not wanting to strike at every little dip on a dotted down bristle. And that's it basically, we're nearly done. Now lift your float out, holding the slap swivel, just slide your float up the line a few feet. Now I start off with the Olivet about two feet or thereabouts from the swivel, hold it in place with the thing. That leaves me with four number eights and just for the moment I'm going to block them in two blocks of two. I can change all this around at the water's edge. So there we have it. Snap link swivel, four number eight, Olivet float. All we just do now is just measure off. I like to make my arms are about a five foot span. So I take 
two spans of my arms and a bit. The reason for so much line is that the swims could be, well, they'll probably be between eight and 13 feet deep, depending where I'm fishing. If I was going to tackle a really deep area, they'd be even longer. But always make your rigs longer than you think you'll need. It's a matter of a few seconds to cut them down to length and put a new loop in it. So last thing, tie a loop in the end. My trusty census loop tie that I would not be without. Three turn loop. I'm being fussy about all this because I'm fishing for big fish. Don't want to hook the uh, fish of a lifetime and have the rig let me down. And there we have it, it's done. Just snip your tag end off. Like so. Go back to the other end. Just catch the uh, snap link under the end of the hook and wind it round the winder. Always make sure that the float body sits well inside that winder so it's protected. Just carry on winding it to the end. No need to pull the line over tight, just so it lays neatly. When you get to the end with the loop on, slide one of the little sliders up, hook the end of the loop, the loop over the little peg, slide it down just enough to tension it. Job done. Really like these slider winders, been using these ones and uh, the Fox versions for a while now. So there we have it, now on to the next rig. So the next one is exactly the same procedure. Prepare it first, slide your uh, tips off, spare ones. Incidentally, this, this one has a thinner tip because it's uh, smaller weight. So, first things first, line. Couple of bits of silicone. Slide the uh, small one on first. One of the penguins are getting older is that your eyesight suffers. There we have it. Bring the float down. Wet the stem. Push the rubbers on. Shorter one first, up to about an inch below the float body. And the second one. Pull the line down through. Right, then we just add the split shot and a snap link. Right, so we have the float on the line 
with a quick change link on the end. Now all we're going to do is just add the required number of shots or stots in this case. Now 0 0.6 grams. I'm going to start off with about six number eights. And there we have that one done. So slide the float up again. Now with this one I'm probably just going to use spaced out uh, shot. So I'm going to slide the float up a fair bit at arm's length and then just slide these shot up. Lines nice and wet so the stots will slide easily. Now although I've spaced the shotting out for a slow drop through the water I can always bonk them down make it drop through the water quicker and that's it just pull off two and a bit spans of line when making pole rigs up always make them longer than you think you'll need you can soon trim a bit of line off the end and uh, I for one don't like adding lengths of line to it I want as few knots as possible because when all said and done at the end of the day I could latch into five pound plus perch and where I'm fishing they have been caught from there and that is my target my personal best is 4 to 12 I want to beat it I've only spent 20 years drawing well, um, when did I catch that 4 to 12 uh, at 2001 I think so yeah still a way to go anyway so take the other winder And there we have two finished pole rigs. Two AS8s, one gram and 0.6 of a gram. Now that took me a bit longer than it would because I was doing it on film. And there we have it. It's not a job I like doing, I will be honest. In fact, jobs like tying pole rigs and hook links are the things that I, two things I really hate about fishing. But hook lengths are essential you need to have a good supply of tied hook links. Uh, pole floats in theory you can make up on the bank but you've got to carry the floats then and stuff like that and they always get damaged and it's much easier to assemble a pole rig in the warmth of your kitchen or front room or wherever it is you're doing it rather than when you're on the river bank impatient to get fishing. One of the advantages of a pole is that you can just take a rig out, put it on the pole, plumb it up and away you go. So there you go. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, these rigs, I should say, are specifically for a deep, slow river. So they're not your typical commercial rigs, but they can be used on a commercial. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now and catch up with you soon. And now I've got to tie some more. Right, let's get on with it.